thrills my heart to see them children. Does it not thrill yours? Why is it thrills mine? And we're going to take a wee moment now and we're going to pray for them as they gather upstairs. Lord, we do thank you for these little lambs amongst us. And Lord, we commend them to thee now and we commend the leaders up there in the crash that you'll protect and that, Lord, you'll bless them. And Lord, we thank you for that lovely thought that Rodney brought to them, that they would learn the love of the Heavenly Father early on in their life. And so, Lord, we do commend them to thee. Pray, Lord, now as we turn to the sacred page that we would hear thy voice in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn with me this morning, please, to the Word of God. We're turning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Sorry, chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians, and we're in chapter 5 this morning. And then I want to take just a short reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now, we're first of all reading from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, and we're commencing to read from the first verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with them. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Now, keep your finger there and come with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. The second epistle of, Timothy, of Paul to Timothy. And we're in chapter 3. Verse 1, Paul writes to Timothy, and this is what he says. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the truth thereof, from such turn away. Now, if you flick back in your Bibles, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it's there where you'll find our text this morning. Quite a number of years ago, a Royal Navy ship was making its way back to Portsmouth. After a very long tour of duty in the South Atlantic, uh, patrolling the waters in and around the Falkland Islands, these men were away from family, they were away from wives, they were away from home for many, many, many months. But now they were on their way home. Each man on that naval ship as it, they were making their way back to Portsmouth, their hearts were filled with excitement 
at the thought of going home, at the thought of being reunited with waves, at the thought of being reunited with families and some just to be reunited with girlfriends again. There was a mighty amount of excitement upon on board that Royal Navy ship as she made her way home. Well, on the shores at Portsmouth where this Navy ship was to dock, perhaps there was maybe more excitement because gathered there on the shore were all the wives and the girlfriends waiting eagerly as they watched with full concentration upon the horizon to catch the first glimpse of this naval ship that was bringing their loved ones home. All of a sudden, there was a dot in the distance. This was the first glimpse of the ship. And the joy and the jubilation that was, that was upon the shore as that ship came in view was phenomenal. But as the ship drew nearer and drew nearer and got larger and was coming close to the dock, everybody was so excited at the thought that very soon they were going to be in the arms of their loved ones. The ship docked. The gangplank was placed down, and after clearance, all the Navy personnel disembarked from the Navy ship. And what a, what a moment of joy it was when both wives and husbands threw their arms round one another and what joy it was when boys threw their arms into their girl, around their girlfriends and met up with family and friends. But it was joy and jubilation for everybody apart from one. One Navy officer felt lonely and he felt alone because there was nobody there waiting for him or watching for him. Terribly worried, he made his way home. And as he went home, he found his wife sitting at home. And as he came through the door, she says, Welcome home, my dear. But his reaction, his reaction was one of disappointment. Disappointment that she wasn't there at the shore watching for his home call. Her explanation was she was too busy at home to go to the shore. He was disappointed because she wasn't there watching for him like the other. Do you know, child of God, this morning as we come to our Scripture reading, God wants to remind us this morning that the Lord Jesus is coming again. I want you to be reminded that, in fact, God of heaven wants us to be reminded of that truth this morning. Christ is coming again. But right at this very moment, child of God, tell me, are you like the waves at the shore? Are you watching for his coming? Or are you just waiting? My text this morning is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6, where it says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Watch is the word from heaven this morning. Not wait. Watch. And you know, child of God, this morning, as the ship neared the docks, and because they watched, and because they watched and continually watched, they knew, they knew that their loved ones were very near the shore. The big problem amongst the church of Jesus Christ today, she's not watching. She's not watching. And child of God, this morning when we look at these days in which we're living in, and when we see the signs, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now, child of God, the signs are before us. 
Tracy was showing me something last night on the computer where over in America they're now chipping people. They're actually chipping people to do with their work. Every detail, they can unlock doors, all the rest, by implanting a little chip. Tell me this, child of God, does this not show us and warn us that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh? I want to tell you something, child of God, this morning. In fact, the Lord wants to remind us, Jesus Christ is coming again. The text says, let us watch this morning. Let us watch and be sober. Too many of God's people today, they're like that wee woman at home. She was too busy with her homework. She was too busy with the businesses of life to be on the shore watching earnestly for her loved one to come. I'll tell you, child of God, sometimes this morning we're too busy watching concerning the affairs of this life than to watch for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The text this morning is, let us watch and be sober. Watch is the word that is being sent this morning from heaven right down into the very depths of our hearts this morning. Watch and be sober. They that watch will not be surprised when the Lord comes. The Lord Jesus himself said in Luke 17, verse 26, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. I'm telling you, child of God, if there are ever days we are living in, it's the days of Noah. Luke chapter 17, verse 28, As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. I'm telling you now, child of God, the ship is very close to the shore. And the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. But God's message for that heart of yours and God's message for this heart of mine this morning is watch and be sober. You know, first of all, the Lord wants to show us this morning the necessity of watchfulness. The necessity of watchfulness this morning, child of God. Do you know something, child of God? We have a privilege. Do you know what the privilege is? The privilege is in verse number two. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Do you know we have the privilege this morning of knowing these things? But do you know something, child of God? There's people in the kingdom of Morn, there's people in the north of Ireland have no idea as to what's going to happen. I remember the first week that I came here, I took up the series on my first teaching week, and that week was called Things Which Must Shortly Come to Pass. The night I preached on the rapture, and then I preached the following night on the Antichrist, Satan, Superman, and Earth, I had to sit down with a lovely couple and try to explain to them why they were not taught that in their church. They never hear tell of it. They didn't know that the day is coming when millions will suddenly disappear from the earth. They knew nothing about the Lord Jesus coming through the air. They were more even taught it. And I'm telling you, child of God, if there ever was a day that this needs to be preached, it's this day. Because the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, and we are the people of the day, child of God. And we are to be watching. We're not to be waiting for the Lord. We're to be watching for the Lord. You know, that's the privilege that we have. Because of the promise that was made, what did the Lord Jesus say in John 14 and 3? He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. I'll tell you, that's a personal promise because the Lord Jesus says, I will. And it's a permanent promise because he says, I will come again. And it's a purposeful promise because he says, I will come again to receive you unto myself. What a moment it's going to be, child of God, when the Lord comes and calls from the world his own. We have the privilege, we have the promise. In Hebrews 10, verse 37, child of God says this, He that 
shall come, will come, and shall not tarry. You know, because of this, this morning, child of God, let us watch and be sober. Too many of God's people this morning are awaiting rather than watching. The necessity of watchfulness. Do you know something, child of God, what my text teaches me? My text teaches me this morning, it's not enough to know that he's coming. It's not enough this morning. It's not enough to know that he's come. It's good to know that he's coming, but it's not enough, child of God. Because what the Lord is saying to our hearts this morning is, listen, you have to watch this morning. And the purpose of this need is to keep you and I unspotted from the world. Do you know why the Lord wants us to watch this morning? Because the more we watch for his coming, the more we watch, the less we will be conformed to this world. The less the chance will be to be conformed to this world. The problem amongst the church of Jesus Christ today is this. The Christians have become comfortable in the world. I remember a man who used to buy stuff of me called Harold Carson from Armagh. And Harold used to explain to me years ago the Lord's return. It was in your mind every day. You got up in the morning and it was in your mind. You're out and done a day's work. It was always in your mind because it was taught it that way. And because it was in your mind, and there was that fear that come with it, that fear of making sure your life was right, that if the Lord was to come, your bills would be paid, your life would be right. Because I'll tell you, there's two types of Christians going in the rapture. There's two types of Christians going in the rapture. There's the excited, and those are the Christians who's watching. But then there'll be the embarrassed, those who weren't watching, but were caught up too much in the ways and the things of the world. Watch is the word this morning, not wait. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh, and but of that day and hour knoweth no man. In Mark chapter 13, verse 32, we're told, the angels don't know. Of that day and hour, Mark 13, verse 32, tells us that the Lord Jesus himself doesn't know. Only God the Father God the Father. And the purpose of watching child of God is this, that we'll take our eyes off the things of the world and focus them on the most important truth, and that is Christ is coming again. The purpose, to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. I believe that's lacking in Christians today. I'll tell you this, it's lacking in my own heart. Because we are the people that needs to be watching in these days for the Lord's coming. It will come as a thief in the night. No thief wraps your doors and tells you how you can come in. A thief comes when it's least expected. But then... There's the praise because in Luke 12, 37, the Lord Jesus says, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. And keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and be ashamed. That's what the Lord's trying to tell us this morning. The need for watchfulness is so that we will keep our lives clean and clear as it possibly can. That's why, child of God, it's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. We need to be watching. Not waiting. We need to be watching for the coming of the Lord. Living our lives the way the Lord wants us to live them. 
Not to live our lives the way we want to live them, but to live our lives according to the Word of God. Watch is the Word this morning for your heart and for that heart of yours and for this heart of mine. Lest, lest he come and find us not worth watching. You see, verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others. I'll tell you, there's a lot of sleepy saints. But then it says, Let us be sober. Let us watch and be sober. That's the concern, Christians. Those who watch will seek to win others for Christ. Are you watching this morning, child of God? Are you watching? Are you really watching? Are you really concerned this morning? Well, let me ask you one question. When was the last time you invited someone to a gospel meeting in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle? If you're really watching, the how you answer that question will tell me how well, well, show God how well you're watching. Because I'll tell you something now. I was a very humble fellow when I was getting this message because I couldn't say a big pay. The necessity of watching. Because do you see when the Lord comes, I'm going to tell you, you're going to leave loved ones behind you. And once the Lord comes, that's it. There's no more checking chance. There's no more sharing with them the gospel. There's no more reaching to them. There's no more gospel meetings on a Sunday night. Well, they may come. I don't know what they're going to do. But it'll be too late. Let us watch this morning and be sober. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Secondly and finally, I want you to watch very closely, which is very important. Not only the necessity of watchfulness, watch the nature of watchfulness. Because this is important. The nature of watchfulness. Notice first of all in verse Verse 4, it says, But brethren, ye brethren are not in darkness, than that they should overtake you as a thief. Uh, that, they, that, that they should they overtake you as a thief. Now, that's the mental nature we need to have. You know, child of God, this is what we need to get into our minds. We are the children of the day. We're not of those who sleep at night and who don't give two hoots what happens. Child of God this morning, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That means we're not this morning without understanding. Do you know what I'm concerned about this morning, child of God? I'm really concerned about that the children of God aren't mentally sharp about these things. I can tell you, dear child of God, if there ever was a day when we're living in the last days, I have to say it's the days in which we're living in. As it was, so shall it be, I. And you see, if you're watching, child of God, you'll see the sign staring at you in the face. Nobody preaches the second coming because the old devil he has threw in the spanner called controversy, and men are afraid to preach it, and they won't preach it. Well, as long as God has breath in me and my body, I'll preach it. It's one of the greatest doctrines of the Scriptures. And do you see these pages? These pages are contains tomorrow's news. These pages, they contain tomorrow's news. And that's a mental nature we need to develop and get familiar with. Because do you see these dark days in which we are living in? And God's laws are being tramped into the gutter. It's exactly, it's exactly what way the Lord told us it would be. Let us watch 
I'll be sober. That that day won't take you as a thief. You know, child of God, we need to develop this morning that mental nature of watchfulness. But if you read this chapter very carefully, you need to develop a moral nature to this very watchfulness. Look at verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet, the hope of salvation. You see, when you develop not only that mental nature of watchfulness, and not only will you develop, if you develop that moral nature of watchfulness, do you see if you develop that, do you know what will become? Your walk for the Lord will be shorter. And your faith will be sharper. And your hope will be sharper. And your joy will be sharper. Because these things, if you're watching, these things that's going on in the world today, first thing that should come into your head should be this, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Second Peter 3 and verse 11 says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ye ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the Lord. I'm telling you, We should be living in these days. We should be watching in these days. And watching. And living according to our watching. God's people Listen to me. If you and me, I'm including myself here, if we're really watching the way we should be watching, we'll be living more so unto the Lord, not as unto the world. If we're really watching. Watch is the word this morning. Watch. The mental nature, the moral nature. But verse 9 and 10, you've got the motivated nature. Boys, I love verse 9. Because it says in verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, by our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, do you see that truth there? For we are not appointed unto wrath. That should motivate you to watch. Because do you see you and me, we're not for the tribulation. A lot of people think they are, but I can tell you now we're not. Because First Timothy, First Thessalonians 5 and verse 9 tells us we're not. Do you want to know why? Because we're not appointed unto wrath. Do you see once the church is raptured, and every Christian disappears, I'm telling you, this world ain't, hasn't seen 
anything like it what's going to happen called the tribulation period when God pours and unleashes his wrath upon this world and a wee word for you unsaved people now you see if the Lord Jesus comes back today we are going and you're left Be ye ready, for such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. I was going to say, God help you if you're left behind, but God will not help you then. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh, and you need to be saved. Because I can tell you, no terror awaits the child of God because we're not appointed unto wrath. That's why we're at the Lord's table after this meeting, to remember the one who endured the wrath for us. But look at verse number 10, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Oh, glory to God. Boy, that should motivate you to watch. To watch that for that day and for that moment. And someday we'll be taken out of this world. To live together with him. You know, maybe you're here this morning and you have a loved one lying up in the cemetery there buried in the mill road. And I know it's hard and it's tough. But I'll tell you there, for them up in the mill road, that's not final. That's only temporal. The loved ones that you have up there are only there till the Lord come. And that's why we should be really eager to watch this morning. For that moment when the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. That should be the motivation for every believer to watch in these days. The Lord Jesus says concerning these last days in which we live, and then when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draweth nigh, child of God. Watch is the word that God wants to burn into that heart of yours and mine as we live in these last of the last day. Watch is the word. May God bless it and burn it into every one of our hearts, including mine. We're going to